Hey guys, Chad back here with you on the RC Models and More channel. And one of the things that a lot of new drone pilots struggle with is how to edit and make cool videos. So I'm going to show you basically from a four month noob Adobe Premiere perspective how I edit and put together some of my videos. Like I said, I've only got four months of training on this. I've done a lot of research. And I hope to just, with this series, give you guys a nice, simple, easy way to start producing videos with Adobe Premiere. And then you can go ahead and learn more advanced techniques on your own. <clears throat> so stick around, like, subscribe to the channel, and uh, let's get this series rolling. All right, guys, as you can see, I'm using a 2015 iMac, and this is Adobe Premiere. If you ask people what editing software you, do you use, half the people will say Adobe Premiere, half will say Final Cut Pro, whatever. I'm subscribed to the Creative Cloud. I get all the Adobe apps for $50 a month, and I get all the updates. Some people like subscriptions, some people don't. If I had the money, I'd probably buy it outright, but for now, Paying for 50 bucks for this, Lightroom, Photoshop is good enough. And I get all the updates. So let's open up Adobe Premiere here. And this is your main opening screen. And this basically is just where you can go ahead and open a new project, an, uh, open an existing project, start a new project. A team project was something which is something that you can pass back and forth to uh, different people in the office you know there's all kinds of cool stuff that you can do with this uh, with this software it's pretty amazing and I pretty only I probably only learned about two or three percent of the whole thing just enough to you know produce some videos and understand stuff so let's click on new project and we're going to be doing a video from start to finish and then we'll post it to YouTube and then you guys, we can all see the results together. It's going to be a waypoint video that I've shot with the Mavic Pro and it's basically Leechy versus Autopilot. Right here, there's the location where it's going. Ingest settings is something really important that we can talk about it sometime, but I don't want to get into that now. So just leave everything the way it is and just click on OK. Now here is your main screen. It's divided up into different subsections. Everything pretty much operates the same whether you're on a Windows or a Mac. I'm not going to talk about any hotkeys or shortcuts or nothing like that. Um, just so that way it will apply to any platform that you plan to use. So let's take a look at the screen here. Up here in this box is where we can pull up video and do our edits and clicks and stuff. And then we can drag them down here into this long rectangular box, which is our timeline. This box here is where we can import our videos. And then this big box up here is where we're basically going to see the full sized and production of the actual video itself. There's a couple different ways that you can import video. You can right click, click import, go up to file, click import. Then you can import by individual files or folders. Since I have everything organized in one folder, I'm just going to go ahead and import the entire folder. And load up, and boom, there they are. We can click on the little button here. That will drop down, show us all of our videos all in our folder and then we also get a lot of information inside here we get the frame rate 
the resolution, how high, how long it is, how short it is, yada, yada, yada. And you can also go in here somewhere and customize what order you want to see those in. So let's uh, take a look at the next step. All right, now that we got our video in here, let's take a look at how we can actually get this ball rolling. The first thing we're gonna need to do is think about the timeline. So you're basically gonna drag one of or your highest resolution clips from your imports and drop it into the timeline. This is gonna like set the bar or the standard of the quality of video. So I'm gonna choose one of the videos shot from the Mavic Pro, since it is in 2.7K, and I'm just gonna drag it over and drop it in there. And boom, there it is. You see we got a picture up there, everything else. We can use the little blue bar here to slide back and forth across the entire project. Right now, it's in 2.7K, but this little tab right here, if your computer's running slow, you can actually adjust the resolution to this. So you can adjust it down to half, a quarter, an eighth, or when we get into a little bit more advanced stuff, we can create a proxy. And a proxy is just basically a lower quality image that's tied to your main quality image. So you can create a 1080p proxy of a 4K image and everything that you do with it in Premiere will be linked to each other. So when you go and render it out at the end, it will actually render out in 2.7, 4K, whatever. So down here, these are the video channels that were created in the timeline. The top always has priority. Um, you can add more than what is on there. The bottom ones are audio channels. As you can see, I just added one of those. You can do voiceover recordings with that button. You can mute the whole uh, channel with that button. A lot of different things you can do with the audio. You can raise it, lower it, We'll get into all that later on. These here are your timeline tools. Quite honestly, I only use the arrow and the cut tool. Um, you know, let's say I wanted to cut out this uh, flying back to the lake here. I could just drag across the timeline, find the exact position that I want to cut, and then I can take the cut tool and bring it down and click the mouse button and boom now i have two clips if i want to get rid of that junk i can select the pointer drag it up out of the way highlight it hit the delete key and boom it's gone then i can drag this clip around right now i'm just going to put it right back to the beginning and then there you can see that's the beginning of our movie or at least for this demonstration. There's a couple different ways you can do the exact same thing though. Like I was saying before, you can actually do your cuts and edits up here. So I can drag this blue bar just like I did over on the main assembly, the main side, and I can find the beginning of the clip. And then there's two buttons here, are your in and out markers. So I can click on in, create an endpoint, Click on out, create an out point. Then I can drag the clip down into the timeline and just pop it in wherever I want. So I'm gonna put it at the end here and we'll just uh, skip down there and show you that there it is. Real simple and easy to do. And now, 
you can actually go back to that same clip that you just cut up there and take little pieces and chunks out of it even after you've already done that. So you don't have to worry about destroying it or losing it or anything. The other way you can also cut or make changes is by grabbing the, the line like I just did there and moving it in and out. The slider bars down at the bottom expand the actual clip. Ah, got cut off. Like I was saying, the bars down there at the bottom, you can actually click and drag to expand the actual clip or compress it. So if you expand it, then basically you can make a cut a little bit finer when you're trying to cut out like audio segments or dead parts or whatever. But uh, we'll get to more of that later. You can see how as I drag it to the right, it's making the entire clip shorter so you can see more of the timeline. And then if I bring it back this way, it's totally expanding it out like crazy. And you can see that uh, it's basically in five second intervals. So, you know, you're looking at right there a minute 46 and 20 seconds up to a minute 47 and 20 seconds just right there. So 20 second increments. So anyway, let's just go back to the beginning of the clip here. Showing you again how you can actually push in and get rid of that stuff that we don't want. So you can do it that way at the beginning of the it's crop the beginning or the end versus doing a cut. So there's a lot of different ways to do the same thing when it comes to manipulating your timelines. Now the audio is the same way too. And we'll see that later on when we get into uh, mixing in and playing with audio. But I just wanted to start with <clears throat> a couple video clips just to make the tutorial a little bit easier to see and understand. So if I want to drag in another clip that is not as high as resolution, I'm going to move the other clip out of the way. And then here comes a clip from Leechy, which is a screen record off of the iPhone. Now it's going to look smaller and not take up the whole size of the screen. That's because the resolution size is a lot smaller than what we set the timeline at when we first brought in the DJI 2.7K clip and set the ground rules, set the standard. So we can actually manipulate that by going down and clicking on that clip. And then we have the ability to set the, the scale or the size of the actual frame. If we highlight it and right click, you can see there's two options that say set to frame size or scale to frame size. So I usually just do set to frame size. I think scale gives you better quality, but we're just talking about screenshots here. So it's really not that big of a deal. So we're getting pretty long here for part one, and that's pretty much just the basics of how to import and how to start working in the timeline. So I'll keep working on these videos and I'll get them out to you as fast as I can. Um, hopefully I've explained stuff in a normal point of view or with normal vocabulary and made it 
easy to use. You know, don't be scared of this program. It just takes some time to learn. And uh, that's about it. So we'll see you guys in part two. See ya.